What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and today we'll be doing the full review on my first ever Nilfisk, or Lindhaus. You can call it either one, because it's branded Nilfisk, but it's clearly a Lindhaus design. Now, Lindhaus, in case you're not aware, and Nilfisk too, are sort of premium vacuum brands that you will never find in a traditional brick and mortar store. You're not going to find them in a Walmart or a Target. You're going to find them in a premium vacuum shop, at least here in the States, if you see it at all. And much in the vein of SIBO and to a lesser extent Mila. So these particular machines are not going to be ones that you find at retail for the most part. You're going to find them on the used market, which is where this review would mainly be helpful. Or there are newer versions of this machine that are available on the new market as well from your local vacuum shop if they happen to be a Lindhouse dealer. So that's that. So I've been using this vacuum for a few days and uh, basically I'm ready to give my overall thoughts on the machine and if it's something that you should worth if it's something you should worth if it's something that you should consider picking up and if it's worth it now right off the bat I will say that this machine is missing too many features mainly the biggest being a brush roll shutoff in order to be acceptable as a full price retail machine at least in my opinion because even if you are of the opinion that you want a premium vacuum that and you don't care about it having a turn turning offable brush roller that's not proper grammar but a brush roll shut off then something like a SIBO G4 or G1 would honestly be a better choice than this anyways and yes it is worth noting that my particular machine has a SIBO hose and wand on it so I'm not going to be able to review the attachments all that effectively so this is not really a proper review it's more so just for fun before I sell this machine now on board, since we are talking about the attachments, it comes with a crevice tool, which is a fairly nice crevice tool. There really isn't much to say about it, it's fairly basic. And it also comes with an upholstery tool that I do not have, so I can't comment on. So, that's that. Now, on the side of the machine you do have a height adjustment, which is a little bit awkward, but I did finally get it adjusted to my floor properly, so the issue of it being hard to push was fixed, although this is still very confusing and it's not a very well designed height adjustment because it's just not very clear how you're supposed to adjust this so that's not very good one thing that is good though is just like a SIBO you have a brush roll that's easy to remove you got this little cap right here that you can pop off to access the brush roller and there is a way to do it I just don't know how to do it but I'm sure there is a way to do it to take this off but right down here we have the base plate which we can turn turn these little swivel things right here and we can pop off this base plate at least once I get this one lined up and there we go we can pop off the base plate and we have access to the brush roller which is made out of metal for the most part which is built very well and the bristles are kind of funny the way that they're sort of designed we've got these bristles that kind of go along along the brush roller and then we got these ones that very quickly wrap around the brush roller so it's almost like it changes the spiral depending on what position it hits on the carpet and that's mainly because the intake is right here so we've got this little intake that we can very easily lever out so if you get anything stuck in here it's easy enough to get that taken care of right now it's flipped over to tools so that's of course shut and that just pops on just like that it pushes back down into place just like that and we've got a geared lifetime belt right here which works as you'd expect so all this is very good there's really not much to complain about here this is a very very good brush roller very rarely do I see a metal brush roller in a upright of this style usually you only see metal brush rollers in direct air uprights uh, and even so, a lot of direct air uprights like Kirby's and Oryx will often have wooden brush rollers. So, very, very good quality brush roller. Very good quality construction in general. Uh, these wheels, while they kind of are rubber coated, they're not all that rubbery, if that makes sense. So, but they are, are still coated in some sort of rubber. Although it is worth noting that because this does not have a brush roller shut off, this is not suitable for use on bare floors. There's not even a squeegee on the bottom of this to make it easier to use on floors so yeah and bare floor performance on this is unfortunately very disappointing which I'll talk about later on 
but the actual design of the brush roll for carpet cleaning and the build quality of this whole cleaner head is very good and there really is little to complain about there so once we're done we just take this base plate and there's a way to put this on there it's like that so you kind of wedge this on and put that on and you twist these little things to lock it back in place which is really nice no tools required everything just slides back on although in my case it's a little loose I'm not sure if that's related to these but a little bit loose but hey it does still hold on so not a big deal there's all these also these little wheels on the side which these aren't rubber coated very well they're very plasticky so I can only assume this is probably for it to glide along the wall so it doesn't scrape which is a good idea but it's only on one side so I'm not sure why that is although given the fact that the intake is right here it's clearly designed for you to use edge cleaning on this side anyways uh, as edge cleaning is not going to be as good on this side which is probably why they didn't bother because you have a lot of space from the edge to the brush roll because of where the belt goes so edge cleaning is of course going to be better on the well, left side this way or right side if you're looking down on the vacuum like this and i randomly have a pile of junk right here that I dumped out of my Dyson V8, so we'll vacuum that up real quick, because why not? So a couple things you probably noticed from that. First off is that it can be a little bit awkward going from carpets to rugs because of the design of the wheels. So even with it adjusted properly, that's a little awkward, but it doesn't always cause problems. So it's not the biggest deal in the world. But again, I would have liked to see a little bit smoother operation for the price. A couple things I do like is I actually really like the width of this. A lot of vacuums I see are way too wide. This is one of the better widths because there's a nice amount of space as far as coverage on carpets. And yet, despite that, there still is not uh, any issues with it getting into tight corners for the most part. So I really like this width and I'm sure there are versions of this with wider bases. But for me, this is what I would always recommend for anybody. Even if you're vacuuming a larger area and you want to have, you know, more coverage, the quality of that cleaning performance is not going to be good, is, is not going to be as good the more you stretch out the base because the airflow and the suction is not going to be as concentrated. So there is a trade-off there. Right here we have some indicator lights, green and red, of course, for when things are working and not working respectively. Although these vacuums do tend to flicker red when you're turning it off, but... That system is there, so that way if you suck up a sock or something in this brush roller or you get a clog in it, it'll actually tell you and it'll be able to protect the machine. There's also this sensor right up here, which is for if you get anything blocked in the actual hose or if the bag is so full that it causes a issue with suction. And the power button is right here. To access the bag, there's a little switch right here that you simply pull up and there you go. You get access to the bag. You also get access to the filters. So there's a pre-motor filter right here, which part of it's missing. And then there's also a post-motor filter that goes in right under here, which again is missing. But So you definitely don't want to run this without the pre-motor filter, but this does have that. And uh, you ideally don't want to run it without the post-motor filter either, but you can in a pinch. I don't know where to get a filter for this, so I'll just be selling it as is because it doesn't affect the functionality of it. Got a nice little bag dock right here. I'm not usually a fan of these bag docks, but this one actually is pretty decent. I always prefer bags that just push on a collar, but this works pretty well too. And that's pretty typical of vacuums of this style. So just push this back on. It's a little, it kind of looks like a superhero mask when you're putting it back on. And it's a little 
a little loud when it pops on, but hey, it does work. So a lot of characteristics of this really remind you of a SIBO, and again, not just because it has the wrong hose on it, but we also have the handle with the easy cord. We actually have two cord hooks that wrap in front, and there's no quick release, which I don't like. Uh, I guess we're back to the mid-90s with the Eureka Victories that didn't have cord hooks that were able to swivel, so you have to manually undo the entire cord. It is a nice long cord though, it's this nice construction yellow, and it's a very good quality cord. And of course, since it's yellow, you never don't know where it is, so so that's good. Now, I, I would like to see a pigtail style cord, which is something I've kind of grown to really like on commercial machines, but this doesn't have that, but you know, there are easy ways to remove this handle and cord as a whole assembly. If you push this button right here, at least, I, at least I think that's what this does. I believe if you push that button, this pulls out maybe? No, maybe it doesn't. I don't. I thought that's what this button does, but I'm not quite sure. Either way, so there is that as well. Now, you do have a cord clip right up here to keep the cord out of the way, and beyond that, there isn't too much else to say about it. It's uh, very similar in design to what you'd find from a SIBO or a similar machine like a Windsor. So, uh, for me personally, I don't necessarily see any reason to pick one of these over a SIBO or a Windsor. Because while this is a little bit lighter weight than a SIBO, it's, it's very close. There, even though it looks lighter than it actually is, it's about the same as a G1 or a G4 in terms of maneuverability. And while I don't necessarily see any reason why you'd be wrong for picking this over a SIBO, because of the fact that SIBOs are more ubiquitous and have a more clear support network than Lindhaus, at least here in the States, and especially compared to Nilfisk, I personally don't see any reason to pick this over a SIBO, unless, again, you're buying one secondhand and you find a really good deal on it. And, of course, if you have a vacuum shop nearby or an online portal that you can get your bags and parts for. So, if you can fit all those caveats, then it's a pretty okay machine if you want a nice high-end durable machine for carpets. And I specify for carpets because right now we'll be doing the pickup test, and we'll be doing this on both carpets and bare floors, and then I'll talk about my experience with the performance after we do this. <laughs> We can see that the carpet performance was very good. So this, this machine's ability to clean carpets, while it's not the best, um, I don't mean that as, oh, it's bad. Because a lot of people will say it's not the best as a way of saying it's bad. I don't mean it like that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it is literally not the best. But it's pretty darn good. I still think the SIBO would probably get the edge, but one thing that this machine does in particular that's really good is this is one of the best machines that I've ever used in terms of it being able to hold on to the carpet as this carpet mats down into the floor, into the transition. Because if you notice, a lot of vacuums that I do reviews on, I'll do this exact test because one area where vacuums will always falter on my carpet is when there is debris in this patch of carpet as the carpet slopes down onto the floor you can see the floor performance is bad we'll get to that in a sec it will actually cause a lot of debris to get missed because the nozzle won't be making proper contact this is not one of those machines the nozzle actually maintained a good enough contact to get a good amount of the debris now it's not perfect i still would like to see a little bit better performance out of this specific test, but this is one of the best machines at that. 
So that is something where this particular machine excels, is the slope from the carpet to the bare floor, at least in my home. Something that even machines with a lot of suction and a lot of airflow, like the Dysons, or, you know, name whatever other machine you can think of that cleans well, will often leave this stuff behind. I'll have to run the SIBO on this on this track again because it's been a while since I've used it. I don't remember the results of that machine on this. I don't remember it being as good. So that's something where the Lindhouse or the Nilfisk, whatever you want to call it, excels. Now, where it does not excel is, dear God, look at that bare floor performance. And this is very indicative of what I experienced when I was actually using it. This is really bad. Now, whenever I was testing this, I obviously use this for the most part on my carpets, but even still, there were a couple times that I would do this little patch of floor because if you see, now there's a baby gate in front of it right now, it, it normally isn't. I probably should move that out of the way so the cats can actually get to it. But in this little closet is where we keep the litter boxes for our two cats because the previous owners drilled a hole in the door, presumably for that purpose. So we keep this door closed and their litter boxes are in there. It's a nice dark place for them to do their business. And it's in the middle of the floor, or of the uh, ground floor. So it's easy for them to get to no matter where in the house they are. Which is important because one of our cats tends to get sick sometimes. Point is, is that a lot of litter will get tracked out here. So there have been times where I've ran this machine just on that little bit of litter. And it would spit the litter back at my feet while my feet were on the carpet. So, yeah, that's not good because there are even machines like the Bissell Power Lifter Swivel Pet and CleanView Swivel Pet where they just, they're really cheap vacuums that are not designed for bare floors, but they just put a little squeegee and that at least makes the difference up to where it's not kicking the debris back behind the machine. It's at least cycling it before it picks it up. Now, what ideally we just pick it up in the first place without cycling it because that could scratch the floors. But it at least eventually gets it. This Lind house does not. So that's all there is to say about it. It does not work on bare floors. It's not suitable for bare floors. It is primarily suitable for carpets. Good news is that it does do well on carpets. Of course, now we have to clean all this up. much better. So that's it. My in-depth review of the Lindhaus Nilfisk Advanced Power 112, a very long name for a very longly priced vacuum. Now, this particular machine, if you are interested, I'll be selling this on my Facebook Marketplace page for $249 plus free shipping. Just look up the name of this machine that's in the title look up that while you're on Facebook marketplace it's a lot easier than trying to find my profile so based on what I just told you it sounds like I'm not very impressed with this machine and the truth is I do like this machine but because of the fact that I can't use it on bare floors it just kind of doesn't make any sense in my home because to me if I'm going to use a machine that can't work on bare floors and doesn't have a brush roll shut off then I might as well use something with a stretch belt, something like a Bissell Power Force or a Phantom Fury. And if I want something that fits that criteria but is nicer, that is made in a you know, foreign country that is not China and also has a very durable design like this does, then I'll use my Cebo G1. So, yeah, I mean, it's not that this is a bad machine. It's just it doesn't make any sense in my particular collection because I can't have this many machines that do the exact same thing. Unless it's a Phantom or a Bissell. <laughs> so, that's that. This is Intellitech Studio signing out. My internet is still out, so I'm not sure when you'll be able to see this. But whenever you do see it, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did enjoy it, consider dropping a like and subscribing to Intellitech Studios. And if you like things that aren't vacuums, like video games, then consider subscribing to Intellitech Mobile. And if you don't like either of those, well, sorry, but hey, I'm glad that you were able to uh, stop by for a little bit.
So yeah, this is Inteltech Studios. If you have one of these machines, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And again, I will reiterate, this is my first Lindhouse. This is my first Nilfisk. So if I'd said something that's incorrect, or if I made an assumption that wasn't true, or I used something incorrectly, for those of you that are more familiar with these machines, please feel free to comment in the comments below and correct me on anything I may have gotten incorrect. Because again, these are not my specialty. This is the first time I've ever seen one of these in real life, let alone used one. So, I obviously am not an expert on these. I'm an expert when it comes to Phantom, Missile, maybe arguably Dyson, <laughs> and even the expertise in those regards, uh, to some, some degrees, is still uh, debatable. But I'm definitely not an expert on these, so if I got something wrong, I'm sorry. I'm going at it very blind, but to be fair, something as simple as a vacuum probably should be something where you shouldn't need a law degree to actually figure out how to use it, so who knows. Anyways, I'm rambling, I'm wasting your time. I'll see you guys in the next video, and I hope you all have a good one. A lot of good machines, and something, two machines in particular, but one more so, very special on the channel arriving soon, and hopefully you'll be excited for that whenever that arrives. So, Intelldex Studio signing out. Have a good one. Peace.